Hey everybody, have a BenQ that came in today. It is a BenQ W1080ST. It looks like it was made in November of 2013. Nice little projector, not a bad size. This one was obviously in a room that had a wood stove in it or fireplace because it smells like a wood stove or fireplace. The complaint is that it runs for a bit and then the uh, colors flicker and then it shuts down. Most likely that's a color wheel. First thing we're going to do uh, before I even fire it up is I'm going to open up the lamp and just make sure there's nothing that I need to worry about from shipping. To get the lamp out of this one there's a screw right there. And it's a flathead. So we're going to take it out. It is not captive. So we'll put it in there. And then the front actually has a, uh, a clip. So when you take this off, you need to lift it with a little bit of force. Because there's a clip right here. That this little tab catches into. There's a cover. I see a lot of dust in here or something, some kind of dust or smoke debris maybe. See that? All that haze? That's not good. So let's um, let's see. Let me get that. Peel that up. Oh yeah. I don't know if you can see that too well. Let me put a white background. There you go. So now you can see the amount of dust inside. Yeah, it's not enough to build up on my finger, but it was enough to get on the adhesive. So now let's take the lamp out. I believe it's just this one screw in the front and the connector on the back. Yeah. That looks like an OEM. Sure is. The OEM uses an Osram PVIP 240 0.8 E 20.9 N. Good to know. It's not in bad shape either. And then we can look inside. There's the color wheel inside there. It looks okay. Gonna get a Q-tip cotton swab. Just gently reach in there. Just give the wheel a little push. Make sure it's not sticking, there's no crunching, and it's not, it's moving nicely. So nothing's seized in there, that's good. And then there's the lamp blower fan, which you cannot see because there's not enough light. You can kind of see it, it's, see the top, this is it in here. Get my, uh flashlight so you can see what I'm talking about right there that thing I'm going to reach inside with the other end of the q-tip make sure I can feel the fan I can and the fan moves happily so that's good means nothing in there is seized. So we can put the lamp back in and try and fire it up. I am gonna put the cover back on, but I'm not gonna screw the cover on. Oops. 
Let's get that lamp lined up. I suspect this is just going to need a cleaning. I'm going to lay this back on anyway. cord and now let's turn it on okay green power lights flashing just heard the color wheel we have a fan legs loose to fix that looks like that lamp is coming on so that's good so it's probably not a full-on failure probably just a little bit of dirt in there a little bit of dust clogging the sensor yeah I can see the menu on my hat you can kind of see it can definitely see that the light is on in there so the lamp is running and the fan sounds good so yeah let's shut it down and then we're going to take the top off and just give it a, a good once over clean the color wheel sensor possibly some of the fans and then put it back together then we'll run it for a couple hours and now it says it's turning off there we go so I'm plug that power cord and I'm just going to set that lens cover back on put this foot back on okay so to take this apart there are one two three four five screws it looks like on the bottom three four five and that should do it so now let's take the uh, lamp door back off yep and there's one more right there the short one short one goes in the top that's it now the top should pull off a little loose here I'm just going to use this as a shim to keep the top from dropping back down slipped inside alright I don't need that anymore there we go 
trick is really just to go around and start loosening it until it comes off. It comes off in one piece. The uh, keyboard stays on the main board. It's like that side piece. Is that supposed to come off with it or did I just luck out? Yeah, it looks like I just lucked out. So this side piece may not always come off. You can see the clip down there. Come on. There we go. Well, I'll deal with that when we put it back together. My foot came off again. I'll have to glue that. Maybe. So let's see. We have power supply fan. Dirty, but spinning happily. Lamp fan. Also spins quite well. A little dusty, but not too bad. Yeah, just a little bit of dust. This really isn't that bad. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I'll still clean it. It does need a clean. But I think the issue is with the, um, oh, come on, again. this thing did run hot. Plastic is a little warped. But I think the problem here is going to be the color wheel sensor. Mm. It's funny, this back side's a little warped. There we are. So let's get this lamp out of the way so I don't burn myself because it is still hot. And the color wheel, you can see it down in there. So to get that out safely. Oh, something in there. Uh, piece of screw tower that tells me this thing has run hot which one of these is missing oh yeah there's going to be another piece in there too so there's two pieces good to know oh yeah I hear it there it is there's the other piece I fix that with shrink tubing. Just leave it over, glue it, works really well. I do want to check that lamp fan. So let's take the main board out. I'm hoping I can leave this back piece with the jacks, this gray piece connected. Feels like I can. Let's take out one, two, three, four, five, six screws that hold the main board in. like ballast control probably the blower fan for the lamp have a speaker another fan IR color wheel drive and then color wheel sensor there we go so now the low voltage will be here now this should, oh, one more screw, just forgot the most important one.
Hmm. No. It's not coming up. So there's something else holding that in, so that means these do have to come out. So we'll start with the uh, RCA and S video plug. Keep it in frame. Keep it in frame. This is just a five millimeter nut driver. These are not put in tight enough to not do with your hand. If you tried to take these out with a drill, it would just, they'd fly right out. But don't put them back in with the drill because you'll strip them. Just do it by hand. Here we are. All right. Oh, yeah. Now, oh, this is a lot like a Mitsubishi. That poke through header like that. Forget who made it. Looking at the part numbers, looks kind of like a Delta part number. I just don't know enough about the OEM manufacturers and what they make. They kind of hide all their data. Ballast control wires going through here. Let's keep that out of the way. The power ground. All right, so here's the power supply. Here's the lamp fan. Let's finish popping that out. Looks looks kind of clean, at least from here. So it might be all right. Here is a thermal fuse, a thermal switch. This uh, thermal switch here breaks the circuit if it gets too hot. This one is rated YS, what's it say? Part number YS11A95R. So I'm going to say that's a 95 degree C thermal switch or thermal fuse. Yeah, this isn't too bad, but it has a. Here, I'll show you. The blades are. have a decent coating on them. These are airfoil shaped, so if they get a relatively thick coating of dust, the airfoil stops working. That may be what happened here. I want to get this free so I can open it and make sure everything is perfect. There we go, we disconnected the temperature switch, temperature sensor. Okay. So 
So this is a Clixon 250 volt 7 amp YS11A95B-C6 P3AB. So yeah, 95 degree C opens. Some of them will close at their rated temperature, not open. No, this one will open, kill power. It interrupts the uh, main AC power. Okay, oh, let's get that back together all the way. Forgot to clip it. Alright. So, now the fan, this bracket drops off. And then the fan just has little clips. Now this fan could be replaced, but there's really no reason. All you have to do is gently get up underneath. Those clips don't push too hard. And it'll pop right in half. And now we can see the fan blades. Feels pretty good. So the bearing's fine, but there is quite a bit of dust. As you can see when I do that. So I'm going to go hit this with the air compressor. I'll be right back. And we are much, much, much cleaner. There's still a little bit that I will clean off with a, uh, let me loosen it up here. But I got the majority of it off. I'm going to hit this with a Q-tip. Or a cotton swab, I guess they're not Q-tips. What I really should do is probably clean the whole projector. Just give the whole thing a... A blast of air. You know what? I am going to do that. It can't hurt. You can see it's got a, you know, a little bit of dust build up. Mostly smoke. It's not even dust. It's smoke from the uh, wood stove. Fortunately, I can't share the wood stove smell over the internet. Otherwise, I would because it really is nice. I'm going to go blow this out. I'll be right back. There we go. Decent amount came out of it. I will have to separately clean the lid for the lamp and also the uh, upper cover but the internals are now clean i do still want to check the color wheel so let's see if i can get that out safely or rather what i have to do to get it out safely it has to come out safely there's no if set the fan back together Just kind of snaps. And there's some kind of, see that shiny bit? Some kind of goo. I wonder if they tried to put oil in it or something. You know, sometimes people think you spray everything with WD 40. Doesn't smell like anything in particular. Eh. Who knows? Let's see, that does go this way. Yeah. And let's put that one back in. Turn the clutch down. You have to be careful when you use a cordless screwdriver. Now I'm going into metal threads so it's not as big of an issue, but with plastic threads especially, you want to turn that clutch, you know, start with the lowest, in this case it's one, and then turn it up until you get it stopping the screw at the right spot, one click at a time. 
put the uh, temp sensor back on. See how it lines up there. Oh, there we go. I didn't have it in the right pinhole. That'll do it. This one I'm going to tighten down by hand because this one could be over tightened. Make sure we have that in the right spot. There we go. It's inside where the lamp goes. Get that blower fan wire free. And then these two screws to hold the fan in place. I can see on my camera I'm coming up at almost 30 minutes so far and this will stop at 33 minutes so I'm gonna call this the end of part one uh, part two will be putting the rest of it back together and starting it up with the top off so if you haven't already click either like or dislike and if you haven't click subscribe that'd be really cool or just search for my stuff. There's no ads on my channel, so it's really not that big a deal. And if you have questions about your projector or need one worked on, feel free to PM me. Thanks for watching.